Hello, everyone. Good to see you today. In order to promote the development of foundation models, Baidu, in collaboration with Chinese Academy of Science, Zhejiang University, and the University of Hong Kong, jointly hosted the first foundation model workshop. We have set up two competition tracks, including a multitask foundation model track and a cross-model image retrieval foundation model track and attracted over 1,000 people from 35 countries and regions. Here is the workshop schedule. As you can see, we have one keynote talk and six oral talks in total. And now I will give a brief intro for the foundation models. We know that AI is moving towards a more comprehensive direction. From industry perspective, multitasking has become a core research topic in foundation models. We can see that Google, Facebook, MSRA, and Google Demand are all deploying strategies from Google's pathways to Demand's ghetto in the hope of using a single foundation model to handle multiple tasks. However, in the field of computer vision, there is currently a giant gap in the ability of single model to handle dozens of tasks. From business perspective, in smart cities and autonomous driving scenarios, it is necessary to process dozens of tasks. Currently, the mainstream solution in the viral field is that a single model can only process one type of task requiring multiple models to be deployed. Therefore, the demand is being urgent. It can be seen that both from industry trends and the business requirements, foundation model is a future trend. At the same time, Foundation models have made many breakthroughs in various fields, but large parameters and high computational requirements become industry pain points for implementations. Previously, the main reason why foundation model could only handle single or few tasks was due to the conflicts between tasks. Thus, we first need to solve the problem of conflicts between tasks. We are also taking into account both the performance of foundation models and also the efficiency of foundation models. In terms of technical solutions, we have borrowed from the partition mechanism of the human brains. We know that human brain has viral language and motor centers that processes different tasks in different regions and at the same time, these various regions collaborate with, with each other. In order to resolve the task conflict, we have proposed the task MOE architecture, which assigns one pass per task to reduce interference between tasks and allows for mutual promotion through shared weights, which parameters are shared and which are not shared are learned through self-learning based on the correlation between tasks. Specifically, uh, we design the search space based on transformer. As you can see, the attention is shared by all tasks. Each task can choose you to use either the shared FFN or the task specific FFN. The optimal path for each task is learned through an uh, end-to-end -end manner. Similar to the human brain, UFO only needs to activate partially during inference, reducing the amount of computation. Last year, we have released the Vimer UFO foundation model, which cover uh, 20 basic computer vision tasks and achieve 28 SOTA results. Besides, it can be deployed based on different task requirements. Thus, uh, we have one for all tasks and one for all chips. Uh, we can see that Baidu ACE Intelligent Transportation Engine is a full stack intelligent transportation solution released by the Baidu's Apollo, uh, which integrates vehicle road travel through a single AI te uh, technology base. This solution supports multiple subcategories, including intelligent connected vehicles, intelligent high speed transportation, intelligent trans traffic management, intelligent parking, intelligent transportation, vehicle road cooperation, and autonomic driving. Currently, 
the intelligent transportation project has been implemented in over 100 cities. However, the huge scale of implementation and the market space have generated a large demand for the AI technology. In the AI 1.0 era, we quickly build capabilities and continuously close problems through a solution-oriented approach. However, this approach has issues such as low iteration speed, insufficient algorithm adaptabilities to scenarios, and the difficulty in establishing barriers in the traditional fields. With the advent of the AI 2.0 era, foundation model has gradually defined a new research and development model due to its strong versatility, good performance, and the low usage threshold. As an industry per president, combining this technology with transportation scenario can, can efficiently break through the traffic air problem. Therefore, we need to build a transportation perception foundation model and explore new research and development models uh, for the transportation AI, including foundation model per uh, incubation and iteration in order to quickly meet the business and enhance industry competitions. Here is a brief intro, uh, brief intro for the foundation models. Uh, now, let's welcome Lin Xixie, Lin Xixie to give a keynote talk. Lin Xixie is currently a senior research at Huawei. He obtained his uh, bachelor and D uh, PhD in engineering from both uh, Tsinghua University. And he also served as a postdoc researcher uh, from the University of uh, California and the John Humphreys Universities. Uh, Lin Xi's research interests lie in computer vision, in, per uh, in particular, the application of deep learning. His research, the research covers image classification, object detection, semantic segmentation, and other vision tasks. He is also facilitating the application of automatic machine learning and vision foundation models uh, to the above research fields. Lin Xi has published over 90 papers in top teleconference and uh, gained more than 10,000 citations. And now, Lin Xi, you can, sh Lin Xi, you can share your screen. Hi. Okay, so I will start sharing my screen, okay? Yes, sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You can share your screen. Huh? Okay. Okay, one moment, please. Okay, maybe you can see my screen now. Yes, we can see your current screen. Okay, so uh, good. Uh, should I say good morning or good evening, everyone? So it's evening in China and it's morning in Canada. So I'm very happy today to give the talk here. So it is pity that I did not get my visa to enter Canada so that I can only give my talk online. So uh, today, uh, I'm very well. I'm very happy to be invited by Chen and uh, Ding Dong to give my talk here. So the talk of my the title of my talk is "Towards AGI in Computer Vision: Lessons Learned from GPT and Large Language Models." So this is a talk to survey some recent works for AGI in computer vision. So we know that AGI hasn't been achieved by computer vision, but we want we want to achieve this goal. So what the community has been has done for this goal and what shall we do in the future? I will try to answer these questions in this talk. So uh, maybe you can hear something different from other talks because these are all my own opinions that I have created. I, I have been thinking about these days. Okay, now, now let me start my talk. So uh, this is the outline of my talk. First, I will show you what is AGI. So the definition of AGI, and that is the ultimate pursuit of AI. And then I will enter the NLP field, and I will show you that uh, the GPT series has achieved a very high level of development. And we think that they have uh, created or they have ignited a spark of AGI in the NLP field. Then we will enter our main topic that is about computer vision or CV. CV is the next battlefield of AGI and uh, we want to achieve a higher level in computer vision like NLP, but we have 
uh, encountered a lot of difficulties. Why? We want to know why. So we will start with uh, some preliminary solutions towards the unification in CV. And we want to know why unification is so difficult in CV. Uh, are there some essential difficulties or essential reasons for these difficulties? I will try to answer this question. And finally, I will propose a imaginary pipeline for future CV researches. And uh, then I will discuss something with you about the challenges of future CV. So now I will start with the first part. Uh, so this paper, I, I, I summarize some of our uh, thinkings about uh, CV, about AGI in CV in this paper. So maybe you can check, check out the paper in Uh, I think there's something wrong with link, link. Maybe, maybe we shall wait for the link. Uh, we just wait a few minutes. And now I will move to the next session before Lin Xi is back. Uh, and uh, I will share my screen. And uh, when Lin Xi is back, he can share the, his screen. Uh, OK, so let me continue.
Okay. Uh, and I will move to the next session. And uh, here is the uh, intro for the uh, computation track one. Yeah. You know that for the real design network structures and loss function, uh, joint training uh, of the multiple tasks can greatly improve the uh, generalization of the model, however, uh, due to the noise in the specific task data, there is a risk of overfitting. Uh, only using the data of single task for the training, uh, the unified multiple task uh, for each model can average the noise of different tasks uh, by integrating the data uh, of multiple tasks for joint training, uh, thereby uh, enabling, uh, enabling the model to learn better features uh, to further explore the ab ability uh, to the unified multitask foundation model. And uh, for the first competition track, it uh, takes the typical task of a traffic scenario as the topic and combines the three computer vision, basic computer vision tasks, as you can see the classification and task detection task and the a segmentation tax into a single foundation model. Uh, ultimately, a single foundation model processes the capability of the three uh, community tasks while achieving performance ahead of a specific single task model. And uh, uh, the track one aims to improve the generalization uh, ability of the model through multiple task uh, joint training and solve the conflict between different, different tasks. Uh, based on the traffic scenarios, this track selects uh, three representation tasks. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, for the all-in-one joint training, the task definition, uh, given the data set of three tasks, uh, a unified foundation model is used for the all-in-one joint training so that a single model has the ability uh, of the classification detection and the segmentation. Uh, the competition shared a uh, study in Mar March and lasted for more than two months. Same as the last year, uh, we provide uh, free uh, GPU servers for each participant. In addition, we offer a total bonus of 10,000 US dollars and the track one is uh, $5,000. And we also release the open transmand as the training baselines. Uh, we are all very happy that top teams have utilized the released code base. And the competition is divided into the, the two uh, competition leaderboard and the leaderboard A uh, is scored based on the prediction results fail of the three tasks. And the leaderboard B requires the competitor to submit the code and fine tuning scripts and the results of the post fine tuning test on the un, uh, 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 in your world, the leaderboard A is the seen domains and the leaderboard B is the unseen domains. And this track we, we will, will test the model's ability on unseen domains. And the final ranking is based on the computation B. And there are uh, more than 1,000 teams uh, joined the competition. Uh, finally, the, the control team won the first place with an uh, average score of 77.1, uh, and the Huster team won the second place, uh, and the angry uh, Toby team won the third place. And congrat uh, congratulations for the top three teams. Uh, this year, we also certificate the top 10 teams and the certificates can be downloaded from the foundation model website. And uh, let me see whether uh, Liu Xi is back. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry for for uh, sorry for the disconnection. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear um, me? You can now share your screen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so I mean, I mean, where did I uh, disconnect? May, may I start over? Uh, I mean, maybe From your the first beginning? or the second slice. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry for that. Okay, so maybe sorry for that. Maybe I will start over from the very beginning. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the title of my talk 
is towards AGI in computer vision, the lessons learned from GPT and large language models. So uh, I, I didn't know I didn't know that I I am offline. So uh, this is outline of my talk. First, I will start with the definition of artificial general intelligence or AGI. That is the ultimate pursuit or goal of AI. And then I will enter the part of NLP and show you that why in the NLP we think uh, the community has achieved the spark of AGI or ignited the spark of AGI. This is because of the appearance of the GPT series. And then we will enter the CV field as the next battlefield, the important battlefield of AGI, we can see that CV is largely fell, falling behind the NLP field because currently CV does not have a unified solution towards a AGI goal. And then I will show you why I will show you several preliminary solutions to, towards unification in CV. And then I will discuss why unification is so difficult in the CV field. There are some essential difficulties and we can learn some lessons from the GPT or from the NLP series. And then uh, we can learn from these lessons to propose a future research pipeline that is named learning from environment. And finally, I will show you share with you some of my additional thoughts. Okay, now let's start. So uh, I have summarized the opinions of my talk into this paper. So this paper is a survey paper, but in the end of the survey, I shared some of my core opinions in this paper, in, in this talk, and uh, maybe you can take a read. Now the paper has been uh, uploaded to archive, but now, now here I didn't have my archive link here. You can scan this QR code to see if you can find this paper. So this is an archive web page. You can find my slides and the paper in this uh, in, uh, in in this web page. Okay. So now let let me start with the artificial intelligence. So the definition of AI is that it is a research field to replicate human intelligence with mathematical methods or models. So it is related to a lot of other research fields in computer science. So now we know that AI has largely changed the way how people work and live. I know the audience are quite familiar with AI, so I would simply skip over this page. And then I will have the uh, artificial general intelligence or AGI. So compared to the uh, vanilla AI word, so there is a new term general here. That means that as the ultimate goal of AI, the core, uh, the core goal or aim of AGI is to be general, to be generalized across a lot of problems. So we can simply define AGI to be an algorithm that can solve any task that human beings or animals can perform. And here we have a disclaimer that what, what we're talking about AGI here is only about algorithm. It's not related to sentience or consciousness. Uh, we know that uh, in the very beginning of AI, that, in, that is in the 1950s, we have the Turing test, we have the Dartmouth workshop, both of them are talking about the definition of AGI or discussing what an algorithm, uh, how, which algorithm can be considered to achieve the goal of AGI. But not at, at, at the time then, computer algorithms or AI algorithms are quite preliminary so that we cannot think over the goal of AGI really, uh, I mean, really seriously. But now, recently, as the development of as the development of deep learning and the appearance of the GPT series, people think that we have ignited the spark of AGI in the NLP field. Why should we think so? I will show you in the later slides. So, if we want a formal 
uh, a former definition of AGI, we can see this part. So we can, we can consider AGI to be an algorithm that works in an environment. In this environment, we have the, the, the algorithm can, can be given a sequence of states and it has a set of actions to perform. And the goal of the algorithms is to learn a policy that even a state, it outputs an action to perform and obtains a cumulative reward. So the, the goal of the algorithm is to maximize the cumulative reward. So according to the book, the AGI book published in, 20, in 2007, uh, almost all the algorithms in the AI can be formulated into this generalized form. And although this form looks really simple, there are essential difficulties that prevented us from achieving AGI. The, the difficulties include, but are not limited to the following, uh, following points, such as the high dimensionality of data, the complexity of human intelligence, and the lack of neurological or co cognitive theory. Oh, so all of these are the difficulties that prevented us to achieve AGI. However, in recent years, the appearance and rapid development of deep learning has given us a very good opportunity to achieve AGI, or at least to approach AGI. Why? because the goal of deep learning is to offer a quite generalized methodology to process the relationship of data. So no matter what your problem is, if you give us, uh, if you give us uh, input data and output data, we can try to approximate the, the relationship between the input and out of the data using a hierarchical mathematical function known as deep neural networks. So this methodology has been applied to many, many different scenarios. And later some, uh, some algorithms like Gettle even show, showed that if you train a powerful enough backbone such as the transformer, uh, you can, Unify the CV, NLP, or RL, uh, such as a lot of problems into a uh, into one model, so that one model can work for different problems. That is quite similar to the goal of being generalized. So now let me enter the part of GPT. So the the part of NLP. So in the NLP field, one of the most popular algorithms recently is the GPT series. And people think that GPT has ignited the spark of AGI. So why? Because in general, the GPT series can accomplish a wide range of tasks like translation, understanding, mathematics, reasoning, coding, and so on. And it also serves as a logical controller to connect individual components. So we can see some, we will see some um, examples later. Although GPT-4 still has some weaknesses, for example, it has some difficulties in formulating the relationship between people, scientific facts, and so on. It has a strong logic that can help computer vision to achieve, a, 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 to achieve better goals, for example, to solve new problems, as we will see later. So, uh, in the following slides, I will show how I used GPT-4 to achieve a lot of uh, goals to or to solve a lot, a lot of problems. Uh, because many of you are quite familiar with this, uh, with these examples, I will choose to skip them over quickly. For example, GPT-4 can perform general language problems like translation, like uh, question answering, like the named entity extraction, and so on. It can solve some complex mathematical questions, although sometimes the answer is wrong because it is a language model. It, it is not guaranteed to be correct. And it can work on some examinations like the GRE test. It can write essays, and it can work on verbal, on mathematical questions. And surprisingly, 
the, uh, the score of the GPT on the GRE verbal test is higher than 99% of, uh, of human students. So that is quite a surprising result that GPT has arrived. And it can also work together with humans by interacting with humans. For example, it can uh, work with humans to solve a mathematical question or a logical question by uh, multiple rounds. And it can also have some multimodal generation abilities, although the multimodal, uh, I mean, the multimodality uh, interface of GPT-4 has not been open to the public yet. Uh, it can create some prompts that we can use it to create some images in using the mid journey. For example, you can use, you can call it to, uh, you can, you can, uh, call GPT-4 to create some prompts like the to create these pictures and you can say that these pictures are not satisfying and you can uh, modify the prompts to help me create better pictures so I mean I, I know that most of you are quite familiar with these examples so I will skip them over and according to the GPT-4 technical report it can also understand some of uh, jokes uh, presented in images, for example, this joke and this joke about statistical learning and deep, neuro deep neural networks. So although the interface has not been opened yet, the later works such as Visual Instruct Tuning or Mini GPT-4 has shown that other algorithms using large language models and large vision models can also achieve such uh, such question answering abilities in the vision community. And this one is the most surprising example for me. So that GPT-4 worked with me together to solve a coding problem. I wanted to create me an algorithm that can work on the Atari 2600 Space Invader game. So this is a standard reinforcement learning problem, and the GPT-4 wrote up, wrote down a preliminary algorithm for me. So this code is written line. Uh, I mean, is written completely, and I can directly copy the code to my text editor so that it can run. But the code has some bugs because sometimes it misses some part and when I wrote down this it can uh, supp supply me with the missing part and sometimes I get some runtime errors and I paste the error message back to GPT and it shows me that uh, the reason of this runtime error is because I uh, did not install some of the libraries in the in the Linux environment, so that after I install that, I can run it. So after about five or 10 times of interaction, I can run this algorithm smoothly on my computer. And after some time, I've got a very good algorithm that can work on the Atari 26 uh, Space Invader game. So, uh, I mean, GPT-4 has really achieved a very high level in the NLP field that everyone is know, knows about that. So how was GPT trained? So because I was not, I am not an expert in NLP, so I will briefly introduce this part. So the, the training of GPT involves mainly two stages. The first one is named the self-supervised pre-training or generative pre-training. So in this part, you have a lot of unsupervised or unlabeled corpus, uh, and you, you train your model to predict the next word as in, the, in an unsupervised manner. And in the next stage, you fine tune the pre-trained model into a concrete question answering task so that you can collect a lot of question answer pairs by humans and you can train you, you can find in your model to answer this because in the first stage your model has opted 
the ability of few short learning so that in the second stage, you can achieve the question answering ability using relatively small, a relatively small amount of training data. So that is the implementation of GPT. So if you are interested in this, you can look for the, uh, you can look up the internet. So the internet has a lot of articles introducing this one. So I will skip it over. So then I will enter the main part today, that is the computer vision. CV is the next battlefield of AGI that is very important. So CV is more difficult than NLP and we need CV ability rather than using NLP alone. Why? Because I have two statements here. The first one is that CV is a super set of NLP. And the second statement is that language alone is insufficient to achieve many abilities in the real world. So why should we say CV is a super set? We can use this, this very brief example or easy example to show our opinion because for anything that's shown in NLP, you can scan the, the uh, texts into something like this. So this is a scanned version or captured version of this article. Most often people look, people see an image or read an article in this form and they have the ability to process these optical words or, or optical characters into words and then use your, the, the NLP ability to process that. So I will expect that CV is a super set and in the future, if AGI is achieved in the CV community, the AGI algorithm can cover all the abilities in NLP. So that is a, I mean, a simple thinking experiment. And next, and the next uh, statement is that language alone is insufficient to do anything. Why? Uh, here is another example. For example, I see, I saw a bird, a bird in, uh, I saw a bird in the image. So I do, I do not know what kind or what species the bird is. So I want to know that. If I now ask GPT-4 for the species of this bird, because GPT-4 cannot see my image, it can only ask me to provide answers to several questions, like what is the size of the bird? What color are the bird's feathers? and so on. So after I wrote down, write down the answers to these questions, for example, the bird is very large and the head and torso are mostly white and the wings are black. After I write down these answers, GPT-4 can tell me some guesses. For example, it can say, it can say that the bird is something like a white stork or American white pelican. And in the third guess, it says that the bird maybe the royal albatros like this one. And that, that is a correct answer, but GPT-4 says that, please keep, keep in mind that without a visual or more specifics, it is difficult to be, and to be very certain about the answer. So we know that when we are talking to a chatbot like GPT, if we have the ability to provide a visual or more specifics, the understanding of the chatbot may be more specific or may be more certain to solve questions. So the above two examples told us that in order to achieve a AGI in a wide, wider aspect, the CV ability is strongly required. But now we, we will say that the CV community is still suffering from a very low, uh, or I, I should not say very low, but the CV community is still suffering a relatively lower development stage because compared to the NLP field that can, they can use a single algorithm to work on anything, CV algorithm to work on different problems, the CV community is using different algorithms or different models to work on that, just like this one. So standing in this stage, we can say that in order to push the CV community forward, the unification is the future trend of CV. Here by unification, we mean that to use one algorithm or even one model to accomplish a lot of different tasks. 
So uh, in recent one or two years, we have a lot of works. We can, we can see a lot of works in the community toward this goal. I briefly summarized these works into five different categories. And the former three categories is about unifying the form of visual recognition. And the fourth category is about unifying the logic of visual recognition. And the last one is about unifying the vision and is about unifying the interaction between vision and language. So I will briefly review these five categories. So the first one is about the open word visual recognition. So why do I think of open word visual recognition is, uh, I mean, is a, uh, important direction of unification because they have introduced language to perform open word recognition. So the introduction of language offers the vision algorithms with flexibility to process some different requirement to different queries together. So uh, let me let's let's see this uh, this figure. So starting with the clip that aligns vision and language in one feature space, they can perform something like open word classification, the open word detection, segmentation, visual grounding, or even more uh, complex task like the visual recognition by request proposed by our own group. So if you are interest in the survey, please read our archive paper for a more detailed survey. So uh, although open word recognition has offered some flexibility by language, it has still it still has some drawback, such as the difficulty of referring to detailed semantics in an image. For example, if your image has rather difficult, uh, has rather complex contents, the difficulty of referring it using natural language is very high, so that uh, you cannot achieve a very fine-grained recognition ability using the open word recognition. At least it is very difficult to, uh, it is very difficult to arrive the goal. And the, sec the second direction is the currently very popular algorithm named Segment Anything. So in this algorithm, they offered a unified prompt with a annotation closure so that you can segment anything in geometric in one image so that without retraining the model, the same, the same algorithm or the model can be transferred to different purposes like segment anything in 3D, like image tagging, like you can segment anything for in painting or for uh, these hidden objects in the image. So uh, although the, the SAM had, although the, the, the algorithm of SAM has been applied to different uh, algorithms, it it is still the, the SAM still lacks some visual semantics so that uh, they can apply for for in a wider range. So I think SAM to me looks like a really good vision foundation model, but it is. Uh, I mean, it, it looks like a part of the vision foundation model, but how it can be used in a generic pipeline of the foundation model. I mean, uh, what is before SAM, what is after SAM is these things still need some discussion and the future uh, and the future research to be certain. So there are many work to do in this field. And the third part is named generalized visual encoding. It means that we try to encode a lot of different problems into the same target. For example, here are three different targets. The ghetto I introduced previously, and the second one is named the pixel to sequence and the OFA. So the, the, the common property of these two works is to encode visual recognition problems into natural language descriptions. For example, you, you can encode detection into X equals to whatever, Y equals to whatever. So you after you encode everything into a natural language description, you can train one model to unify them all. And the third idea of this one is to use the painter strategy, which means that you do not use the natural language to, to define vision tasks, 
but use the vision language itself to define that so that you can perform something like in-context in learning in the computer vision field itself. Uh, so uh, there are also some weaknesses of this uh, of these uh, algorithms. For example, they are still in the accuracy is still inferior to the state of the art, and I, I think they are not working towards a real a real unified a, a real unification because all these tasks are, I mean, they are forced to work in the same way. So it is very difficult to to follow this path towards a real unification. And uh, so let me be quicker. So in the third, in the fourth path, we can see the la large language model guided visual understanding. It means that to decompose the complex visual questions into a uh, into some uh, into some logic. So this is not a new top a new idea recently. At at least in the year of twenty seventeen. They, uh, we, we can see something like this, so that a question is decomposed or passed by an LSTF model, so that you can call vision model modules to solve it. But recently, as the emergence of large language models, this methodology has been largely uh, improved or generalized. For example, using a large language model like GPT, you can write code, you can process it, the, you can, uh, I mean, explain or pass the question into some natural language descriptions and in which the in which the visual modules can be called. For example, in the code, you can find that how many muffins can each kid have for it to be, be fair so that you can detect the number of muffins you can detect the number of kids so that you can uh, you, you can divide them to get the answer but although these algorithm have has made the the logic a little bit clear a, a little bit more clear in for vision but the level that they can work down is limited for example uh, you know for detecting the number of muffins or the number of kids, you will still have some very complex logic, but these algorithms cannot go down or delve into the deeper logic for some basic vision modules like detection, segmentation, and so on. So, and they are largely relying on the large language models to, to, to work better. And the final one is the multimodal dialogue. So multimodal dialogue first appear like some visual visual question answering, but currently with the uh, with the instruction instruct tuning techniques, it can answer some very complex questions like this. So this is very similar to the effect that GPT four paper has shown. So although this uh, although many papers or many works have been done in the multimodal dialogue uh, field, we, we shall remember that the difficulty to get detailed information via dialogue is still very high. For example, in this street scene, there are many people. If you are looking for a concrete people and you are trying to uh, and you are trying to raise some uh, some questions about that people, maybe. You will fail because the the vision model has not uh, obtained the op ability to referring to very detailed uh, visual information. So what I what I mean about this uh, this direction about multimodal dialogue is that maybe they are largely borrowing the ability from the large language models, but it is not it does not seem like to solve the vision question or the vi or the computer vision problems by itself. Okay, so that is the fifth uh, direction. So after now, we, we have a lot of vision, uh, we have a lot of vision algorithms and they can solve a lot of questions, but the ability of, of completing a concrete task is still low compared to the MLP algorithms. So that leads to a question that why unification is so difficult in computer vision. We want to know some essential difficulties or essential reasons for the difficulties. So 
Uh, now let me go back to the GPT series to find answers here. So we know that the GPT series is a uh, uh, I mean, the key in uh, the key to the GPT series is the chat task, and that and the core opinions on my talk is that the chat task is the it, the task itself is a very important contribution to the uh, to the community. I mean, the task itself is even more important than the algorithms they have developed to solve this task. Why? Because the chat task offered an environment that allows AI algorithm to learn from the interaction and learn for interaction. So imagine that you are living in a pure text world. So the chat task is all the thing that you can do to interact with this world. And unfortunately, you can use the chat task to achieve any goal you want. So the chat task is an adequate task in the pure text world. It means that by learning to accomplish the chat task, you can do anything you want. You do not need anything others to do any other tasks. So that is the adequate task in the pure text world or in the NLP world. That is very important. In CV, we also want such a task, but we cannot because uh, CV does not have such an environment for pre-training and for task solving. At, um, at, in fact, as early as in the 1970s, David Marr has proposed an idea that CV algorithm should be learned uh, should, should be trained to construct the world model and learn by interaction. And later, other scientists followed Mars of, or agreed with Mars' opinion. But un until today, we do not have a very good environment for CV. So why is that? Because in establishing an environment is really difficult for the CV field. Uh, so imagine that you want a, an environment like um, an environment in CV to solve any task, what can you do? The, there are two main choices. The first one is that you can build a real environment, which means that you can place a real agent like a robot in the real world and use you, you, you ask the robot to, to interact with other people, with other agents or so on. But the major drawback of this real environment is that it is too expensive and it has some uh, uncontrollable safety issues. The, the second choice is a virtual environment, which means that you, uh, you build a virtual 3D scene in the computer and you can play some virtual agents in the 3D scene so that you can use it, to, you can train it to, to do anything. But the major drawback is the low fidelity. So here by fidelity, I, I do not only mean by the appearance, because now we have a lot of excellent algorithm for domain adaptation so that we can transfer the algorithm trained in a virtual environment to real environment. So the, the, the efficiency is relatively high, but by fidelity, I also mean that the behavior of the agents in a virtual environment is not real. It, it can affect a lot of things. So uh, no matter you want a real environment or a virtual environment, you are not satisfied in using it to train a, a generalized or a scalable CV algorithm for any task. So it is a very difficult or even unable to simulate the world to, and train your agent in the simulated world. So people instead choose to sample the world so what do we mean by sample the word? We mean by we used uh, we used cameras to to take a lot of pictures around the world, and they form a larger and larger data sets. And they these data sets are sparse samples of the world. And because the because the uh, images are sparse samples or the videos are sparse samples, it means that we cannot let our late agent to interact with the world. So what can we do? The, the, the solution is that we cannot interact with the world. So we just imagine 
what our agent need if the agent is put within the world so that uh, maybe the the agent sees a picture if if the agent want to wants to arrive at or, or wants to achieve some path, uh, achieve some goals what does the agent need so we imagine this these problems and we design some tasks what we call them proxy tasks like segmentation detection tracking so all these tasks are imagined by us so that the agent need in order to achieve some goals in the sampled world so these are proxy tasks so there's a key assumption here the assumption is that in by achieving Lock, by achieving higher accuracy in these proxy tasks, we can push CV algorithm towards AGI. So the problem is, is the assumption still correct in the current stage? So we have a, a brief illustration here. So the, 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 I mean, the assumption maybe is no longer correct. After, uh, before the appearance of deep learning, CV algorithms are very weak so that we can use it. We, we, we can uh, assume that they are here and the perfect proxy task is here and the AGI is here so that in order, so that by achieving higher goals of proxy task, we can go nearer and nearer to closer and closer to AGI. But now we are here. So if you are still working on higher task performance, maybe you are going, uh, maybe you are going to in an opposite direction to AGI. So the proxy tasks are dying. I mean, in the current stage, continuing, uh, continuing working on higher proxy task performance is no longer meaningful. So what can we do? What we need a new uh, paradigm for CV for the uh, for the CV research. So I here I imagine a pipeline for future CV. It is highly motivated or inspired by the current NLP algorithms. First, we can design a a, a virtual environment. The environment must be abundant, must be fidelicious, must be interactable. So we can work on this environment. And in the, in the first stage, we use, we train our algorithm in the environment by generative pre-training. That means that we can place a lot of agents in the environment by, uh, by forcing them to predicting some future frames. And in the second stage, we fine tune the pre-trained agents to accomplish some real world tasks so the assumption is that by training the agents in this way it can naturally gain some abilities for some uh, downstream vision tasks so, such as detection and segmentation it means that these downstream vision tasks are the natural naturals uh, i mean are the are the consequence of training su following such a pipeline it is not the ultimate goal. But the, the goal is to, is to accomplish some concrete tasks. So, but now we work towards these tasks and we just ignore the real goal that is to accomplish real world tasks. So in order to achieve this imaginary, imaginary pipeline, there are a lot of research directions to follow. For example, working on better environments, working on better pre-training models. Uh, I mean, the currently existing pre-training algorithms like the contrastive learning or masked image modeling are no longer effective if we work on this environment. It needs something like the auto-regressive learning and the math form needs better, uh, it needs to be better uh, modified or confirmed. So uh, because of the limited limitation of time, I will just uh, skip over this part. And also we have some reinforcement learning algorithm to, uh, to refer to. So in the past 10 years, 
the deep learning and reinforcement uh, and reinforcement learning work together to create many uh, excellent algorithms for us to use in this uh, in this new pipeline. And also, embodied CV may be the most uh, most similar or related uh, work to our pipeline. You can do something like navigation, exploration, or question answering in the environment. And recently, we also saw some uh, some promising works like the Palm E or ENTL. This is by Google and this is by by Meta to uh, to help us to create some new ideas. For example, Palm E has used some foundation models or large language models to help embodied uh, vision or in embodied multimodality. And uh, ENTL offered a quite preliminary solution to my uh, to my imagined model so that they can uh, tokenize or they can formulate everything into one uh, pipeline. So they are quite, uh, inspiring, but to scale them up into a better vision learning diagram. So we, we need a lot of works or engineering and system works to, to, to achieve this goal. So let, let me briefly summarize this work. So the core part of my talk or the core idea of my talk is that since is that uh, if you remember my title is the lessons learned from GPT and large language models. So what can CV learn from NLP? The lesson is that uh, NLP is, su is successful because they have establishing a chat system that is a perfect environment for learning, but CV lacks such an environment. It can only working on some proxy tasks but proxies are dying today. They will, uh, the, I mean, the, the, the effect of, of, continuous, of continuing to improve the performance of proxy tasks is weaker and weaker today. So they are, the proxy tasks are dying. If we do not change our mind, or if we still continue working on the proxy tasks, maybe we will die with, we will also die with the proxy task. So that's my conclusion that CV needs or CV calls for a new environment and a new, uh, I mean, a new paradigm of learning. So uh, finally, I will, I will summarize my work in this survey paper. So please check out our paper and you can also download my talk the, the slides of my talk in this website. Okay, thank you a lot. Thank you very much. And sorry for this connection and uh, a little bit uh, over time. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Lingxi. Thanks for the uh, nice talk. And I think, uh, uh, I think the audience may have a lot of questions. And uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, yes, if you have any, Questions you can uh, direct ask Lin Lin Xi and uh, I also have many questions and I will ask you later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have questions, maybe you can also contact me via email and I will be very, be very happy to to uh, communicate with you to discuss on these challenging topics. Yeah. So maybe. I, I'm a little bit over time, so maybe we only allow one question, if there are any. Yeah. Yeah, any questions? Okay, so uh, maybe welcome to check out our paper. And if you have some discussions, maybe you can send me an email. So you can easily find my email by by searching my name in the on the internet, and you can send me an email to the to my mailbox, and I I'm, I'll be very happy to discuss any open. I'm very happy and open to some discussions. Okay, so maybe that's all for today. Okay. Yeah.
Thanks for Lin Xi's talk. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank okay. you very thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, see you. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to the uh, competition solutions. And uh, uh, yeah, I, you see we have, uh, here is a, a top three teams for the competition track one. And uh, uh, here is the solutions. So let's move on to the uh, first place solutions. Hi, everyone. We are from China Telecom Cloud Company. We will be presenting our work titled An Enhanced Deep Neural Network Modeling Framework for Multitask Learning Dev. In this article, we aim to provide a technical summary of our exceptional performance in the multitask track of the CVPR First Foundation Model Challenge, where our team achieved first place. Let me provide you with a brief introduction to the multitask track. The primary objective of this track is to enhance the model's generalization ability by employing multitask joint training. By doing so, we aim to address the challenge of resolving conflicts that arise between different tasks. The focus of this track revolves around traffic scenarios. With access to a data set encompassing three key tasks, classification, detection, and segmentation. We are tasked with designing a comprehensive and unified large-scale model capable of excelling in all three areas, classification, detection, and segmentation. The overarching goal is to create a model that can effectively perform all of these tasks simultaneously, thereby enhancing its overall capabilities. The current track comprises a specific number of training and testing data sets. It is noticeable that the quantity of training data sets is relatively limited. In order to enhance the effectiveness of the training process, it becomes imperative to carefully choose a suitable pre-trained model. Below is the network architecture utilized for this competition. We have implemented the Convolution Next model pre-trained on the ImageNet 21K as the shared backbone. Each task has its own unique input shape and the backbone generates four different levels of features that can be effectively utilized by the tasks. For segmentation, we have incorporated a Upernet head, which enhances the accuracy of segmenting objects in the images. When it comes to classification, we have employed convolution layers in conjunction with the CBAM attention module. This combination allows us to effectively classify objects and capture their distinguishing features. Regarding object detection, we have utilized the YOLO CSP PAN and YOLO V5 head. This combination enables us to generate precise object boxes, facilitating the accurate detection of objects in the images. We utilize the training strategy described in algorithm one to enhance the performance of our model. To accommodate the diverse requirements of segmentation, classification, and detection, our data loader generates composite batches consisting of task batches. The task batches have varying batch sizes. During each training step, we first feed the input data through the backbone network to extract multiple features. These features are then passed through task-specific heads which are responsible for generating predictions related to their respective tasks. To assess the quality of our predictions, we employ task-specific loss functions that quantify the discrepancy between the predicted outputs and the ground truth. By computing the loss, we obtain a measure of how well our model is performing for each task. Subsequently, we propagate the loss gradients backward through the network enabling the model to learn from its mistakes and make appropriate adjustments to the parameter values. This process is repeated until all tasks within a composite batch have been processed. Once all tasks have been evaluated and the loss gradients have been propagated, we update the model parameters accordingly. 
This iterative training process allows our model to continually refine its performance across the various tasks it is designed to handle. Our proposed multitask approach has been successfully implemented using Paddle Paddle, a deep learning framework developed by Baidu. To enhance our implementation, we have made use of various toolkits based on Paddle Paddle, including PaddleSeg and Paddle YOLO. During the training process, we utilized a machine equipped with six at 100 GPUs, with each GPU having 80 gigabytes of memory. To optimize our model, we employed the Atom W optimizer with an initial learning rate of 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4 and a weight decay of 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4. In order to effectively manage the learning rate, we incorporated a learning rate schedule into our implementation. Initially, we performed a warm up for the first 200 steps, followed by a cosine decay over the course of 100 epochs. Regarding the composite batch, we allocated specific batch sizes for different tasks. The segmentation task had a batch size of three, the classification task had a batch size of six, and the detection task had a batch size of two. During the training process, we employed several data augmentation techniques to enhance the diversity of the training samples. For the segmentation task, we utilized various methods to augment the data during training. These methods included random scaling, random rotation, random cropping, horizontal flipping, and contrast adjustment. When it came to the classification task, we applied several data augmentation techniques. These included random erasing, horizontal flipping, and saturation adjustment in the color space. These techniques help to increase the variety of the training data and improve the model's ability to generalize. For the detection task, we implemented a multi-step data augmentation process. Firstly, we randomly cropped the images using a crop scale ranging from 0.3 times to 0.6 times the original image size. Next, we resized the cropped images to a resolution of 1024 to ensure consistency. Additionally, we incorporated horizontal flipping as part of the data augmentation pipeline. By incorporating these data augmentation techniques into our training process, we were able to improve the robustness and performance of our models across various tasks. During the testing phase, we implemented the TTA, test time augmentation, technique, leveraging multi-scale inference and horizontal flipping inference to enhance our results. These techniques proved to be highly effective in improving the overall performance of our model. Additionally, for the detection task, we employed the WBF technique, which yielded notable advancements in our results. The implementation of WBF played a crucial role in enhancing the accuracy and reliability of our detection capabilities. Overall, the utilization of TTA, specifically through multi-scale inference and horizontal flipping inference, along with the incorporation of WBF for the detection task, significantly improved our model's performance and contributed to our successful outcomes. Our team achieved the highest score in detection on leaderboard A. We further expanded this advantage on leaderboard B, solidifying our position as the frontrunners. Eventually, we surpassed all other participants, securing the coveted first place position. Below are the results of the experiments we conducted on TTA. The findings indicate that incorporating multi-scale inference and horizontal flipping leads to additional enhancements in the overall score. Now let's summarize the key points of this paper. The main contribution of this research is the development of a multitask framework that enables simultaneous segmentation, classification, and detection. To achieve this, the authors utilize convolution next large as the backbone network UpperNet for segmentation, CBAM for classification, and YOLO V5 for detection. The model was trained using the all-in-one approach, 
which effectively integrated the different tasks into a cohesive system. During the testing phase, the authors employed the TTA technique to further enhance the model's performance. As a result of these efforts, the proposed model secured first place in the multitask track. These findings highlight the effectiveness of the multitask framework and its potential for advancing various computer vision tasks. Many thanks to all those who contributed to this research. I have finished delivering my speech. Thank you for your support and your kind attention. Uh, so here is uh, a first place solution. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, the, the leaderboard A is trained on the seen domains and the leaderboard B um, is for the unseen domains. In other words, uh, the, the, uh, the, the any team, they cannot see the data of the uh, second, the, 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 the leaderboard B. And uh, so they have a very promising results. Uh, as you can see, they, they have uh, carefully choose the, the backbones and they also uh, adapt the batch size of the, each test uh, to uh, reduce the conflict between the uh, detection, segmentation and the classification tasks. And also they, they have used the uh, email net to uh, 21,000 a data as a pretrain and which has more general. Uh, uh, I think this is a pretrain space uh, uh, generalization. Uh, so let's move to the second place solution. Hi, everyone. So here is a, a second place solution. How will text honor to present you with our solution to the foundation model challenge of 3 pr 2023? We join the multitask foundation model learning track of this challenge. Our team has two members. Zhang Zerun comes from School of Computer Science and Technology of Quadro University of Science and Technology. And Pan Xuan comes from School of Electronic Information and Communication of Quadro University of Science and Technology. Please feel free to, to contact us if you have any problems. We are chair first place in leaderboard A, where detection, segmentation, and fine grain classification is evaluated. We achieve second place in leaderboard B, where only detection and fine grain classification is evaluated. The segmentation is not evaluated in leaderboard B, in which our team has a huge advantage. The track one of CVPR 2023 Foundation Model Challenge requires training a model in the all-in-one multitask manner. The unified model must have the ability of detection, semantic segmentation, and fine grain classification at the same time. The detection evaluation is conducted on the Tingfa Tension 100 kilo dataset, taking MAP15 as metric. Semantic segmentation and the fine grain classification are evaluated on the BDD 100 kilo and the Stanford class dataset respectively. Using top one accuracy and MRO as evaluation matrix. We adopt the common single best but multiple hit paradigm in terms of the model structural design. The model has a shared bottom as known as backbone for feature extraction, and each task has its own exclusive prediction head. We adopt the interimage series as backbone. Matthew Former and Dino are used for semantic segmentation head and a detection head respectively. As for the classification head, we simply use an MLT with shortcut connection. The global average pooling feature from the left layer of backbone is firstly fit into an MLP. Then the transformed feature output from the MLP and the backbone feature are added together to obtain the final feature for fine grain classification. When training a foundation model in the all-in-one multitask manner, we find that the gradient norm from different tasks may vary greatly, as shown in this figure. This will lead the backbone to be overly biased to one specific task. 
Here, we refer to backbone gradient norm as the L2 norm of the gradients on the backbone parameters. As shown in this figure, during training, the detection task has the largest backbone gradient norm, much larger than the kernel task of segmentation and classification. Besides, segmentation has a larger backbone gradient norm than classification. This explains why the detection task has a much better performance than ours, and the classification has a worse performance when the vanilla gradient clip method is adopted. The vanilla gradient clip method suffers from the gradient norm bias problem. After the vanilla gradient clip, the clip gradient still bias to the task, which originally has the largest gradient norm. Here we propose TPGC task level backbone oriented gradient clip. The TPGC has two steps. Firstly, the vanilla gradient clip is conducted on each task independently. And secondly, the backbone gradient norm of each task is rescaled to the same norm scale. Here we refer to backbone gradient norm as, a, as L2 norm of the gradients on the backbone parameters. This two formula shows the TPGC for the detection task, where grid detection is the original gradient generated from the detection task. S stands for the max norm. Backbone grid norm stands for a function that calculates the backbone gradient norm given all given the all model parameter, parameter gradients. It is worth noting that the scaling step. Uh, which is in the second formula, is backbone oriented. The backbone gradient norm will have the exact value of S as TBGC. We obtain the segmentation and classification gradients in a similar way. Finally, the overall gradient is obtained by the sum of three tasks, clip, clipped gradient. Uh, algorithm one on the right shows the training process with TBGC. Data augmentation is a commonly used strategy to boost model performance. However, during training, we find that combined use of survey augmentation might lead to a performance drop, while using exclusively will improve the performance steadily. We argue that it is because some augmentation strategies are so strong that they cause a huge change to the original data distribution, and the combined use of them will make the distribution of training differ hugely from the counterpart of testing data. Those harm the model performance. Here, we propose the multi-branch data augmentation paradigm. In this paradigm, each branch can have one and only one strong augmentation, such as MOSIC and uh, auto-augment. Random choice is adopted to combine these branches. During training, the data flow can only pass through one branch on transform form by one strong augmentation. Thus, the model can gain benefit from multiple strong augmentations and can avoid the train test inconsistence problem. The, this table on the right shows the augmentation we use in the challenge for detection task and uh, segmentation task. Here, we pre present our experiments on the about TBGC and the multi-branch data augmentation strategies. Table two shows the comparison between different gradient clip methods. Vanilla stands for the vanilla gradient clip method, where gradient clip is conducted directly on the overall multitask gradient. TBGC star stands for the TBGC without backbone-oriented normless carrying. The result shows the effectiveness of TPGC. Without bells and whistles, the fine grained classification task and the segmentation task gains an increment of 4.25 and 3.5 respectively, without harming the performance of detection. Even though performing a linear gradient clip for each task independently is enough to relieve the gradient non bias problem, given the fact that each task exclusive prediction head has different amount of parameters. 
vanilla gradient click cannot assure the task level backbone gradient norm is all the same. Table two compares the performance between TPGC and the TPGC star. TPGC star actually is fairly enough to give a decent performance. However, TPGC boosts the overall performance further, which shows the importance of each task having the exact same influence on the backbone parameters. Uh, table three shows the comparison between parallel augmentation and uh, multi-branch augmentation. The augmentations described in the last slides is adopted. Compared with the parallel structure, the multi-branch counterpart achieves a 0.53 performance gain, which demonstrates that it is, uh, it is better to place strong augmentations in, diff in different branches. In this presentation, in this presentation, a novel gradient click and the data augmentation paradigm is proposed. Experiments show the effectiveness of our proposed method. That's all. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's very interesting that you can see the second place solution, they use different backbones using different highs. The first place solution used using Yulu, and the second place solution they use the Dino, and they also uh, you use different ways to deal with a uh, uh, great co conflict. And uh, the first place solution uh, during this problem by adjusting the batch size of different tasks, and uh, the second place so solutions uh, use the uh, a more elegant way to uh, deal with a gradient clip, uh, uh, like uh, automatically. So let's let's move to the third place solution, and uh, then we will have a ten minute break. Oh, yeah. So here is the third place solution. Hi everyone. Um, so all the participants are here. Um, so to share our work with you, the title of our presentation is a stronger multi-task foundation model for intelligent transportation. And we will elaborate on four parts, including background information, our analysis, methods, and experiments. First, let me introduce some background. In computer vision, most of previous works are based on single task learning, which heavily depends on the distribution of training data so may lead to a poor generalization ability. Recently, the all-in-one model that aims to solve multiple tasks in a unified architecture has become an urgent demand, and several works have been proposed. For example, OpenTransMend designs a multi-task foundation model, which uses one model to handle the classification, segmentation, and detection tasks of the intelligent transportation. Our work is based on open transmand. First, we analyze the architecture of open transmand in detail. Uh, for backbone, it utilizes VIT or columnar structure, which is not suitable for depth task prediction. For segmentation, it uses PUP head a progressive upsampling method to achieve pixel level segmentation, but which can't extend to other segmentation tasks easily. For classification, it uses a linear projection layer and a fully connected layer as decoder, which is unable to utilize multi scale features and is insufficient to prevent an effective isolation with other tasks. Besides, we also analyze the data of each task. The Stanford car data set used in classification contains 196 car classes, which is a fine grade task. So it is of great importance to extract the detailed information. As for the segmentation and detection tasks, the data set contains many tiny objects, and the scenes are also very diverse, which brings difficulties to the predictions. 
Based on this analysis, we make some improvements. Firstly, um, considering the importance of multi-skill information in death prediction tasks, we employ a hierarchical transformer called a swing transformer instead of VIT. For segmentation, we adopt mask to former, a universal mask level classification based approach that can be easily extended to any segmentation tasks. Besides, mask to former also propose an efficient strategy to exploit high resolution features for small object segmentation, which fits well with our multi scale backbone. And for uh, classification, Instead of the original linear projection layer, we design a new structure called the cross-level feature fusion module to fuse multi-scale features and mine deep, deep detailed information. And here is the overall framework of our method. Uh, now we illustrate the architecture of CLFFM in detail. As shown in this figure, we adopt a learnable gate to aggregate features from adjacent layer. And then a multi-head self-attention module is used to extract deep detailed information. Um, in addition to balance the training of each task at the beginning, we propose an uncertainty-based two-stage optimization method which can be explained in this formula. As we all know, the performance of multitask models strongly depends on the relative weights of different tasks. So in the early stage, we adopt the dynamic weighting strategy, which can automatically adjust the losses weight of each task by considering the homostatic uncertainty. This strategy can reduce the weight of the task that is hard to optimize, promoting the model to learn a general and robust representation from various easier tasks. Starting from the midterm, the model should pay more attention to difficult tasks. Therefore, we turn off dynamic loss weighting and simply sum the losses of each task. Furthermore, we propose a universal data augmentation pipeline for multitasks, um, which can be easily transferred to other multitask models. Specifically, we split the commonly used data augmentation methods into three pools, including spatial augmentation pool, noise augmentation pool, and color augmentation pool. During training, the pipeline randomly selects one augmentation method from each pool and then composes them into a new augmentation operation, which effectively extends the distribution of the training data. Notably, for different application scenarios, we can flexibly adjust each data augmentation pool. For example, in this work, considering the traffic scene, we add mosaic and random weather augmentation methods aiming to improve the performance in segmenting and detecting small objects as well as adaptability under different weather conditions. Here is our ex experimental settings. We use Stanford CAR TT100K and BD100K datasets for classification detection and segmentation tasks. And here are some detailed information about these three datasets. Um, besides, we employ ACC, MM, MLU, and MAT to evaluate these tasks. And the average of these three metrics is used to measure the overall effectiveness of the foundation model. Um, we train our model for 80 epochs on eight GPUs with a batch size of 864 and 8 for segmentation, classification, and detection tasks respectively. In the first 
20 epochs, we turn on the dynamic loss weighting. For the last 10 epochs, we stop the mosaic augmentation. In addition, we set the input of detection to a higher resolution for better inform performance in detecting and small objects. To validate the effectiveness of our improvements, we conduct multiple experiments and the results are shown in table one. Uh, we first replace the backbone with large swing transformer large. As shown in the third row, the scores of all three tasks are improved and completely surpass the VIT based baseline, especially in segmentation and detection tasks. And then we further adopt the mask two former and CLFFM, which makes great progress of 5.92 and 0 0.49 in segmentation and classification tasks. The results reveal that both the stronger backbone and the individual task hand are crucial for the uh, unified large model. Then to improve the detection performance of small targets, we scale up the input resolution and employ a mosaic augmentation method in the detection task. From the results, we can observe a significant increase of 10.17 in MAP. Notably, the MLU of segmentation task also increased by Mm, 2.66, indicating that the strategy used in detection tasks are also beneficial for segmentation, which obviously exhibits the advantage of the knowledge reference mechanism between different tasks in unified model. Besides, we further apply the mosaic strategy in segmentation and adopt the two-stage optimization method. It can be seen from the table that by aggregating all these improvements, our model acquires the best performance, which even surpasses the that huge base, the baseline. The extensive experimental results demonstrate the effectiveness and the superiority of our foundation model. And we also hope that our work, our work can serve as a new starting point, attracting more interest in universal model improvements. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, as you can see, the top three teams, they, they, they are using different backbones, different eyes, and they are using different ways to deal with uh, a great conflict, and they also have different ways to deal with uh, uh, augmentations. Uh, and uh, all, all the top solutions are uh, posted on the uh, paper page of the, our foundation model website. And if you are interested uh, for the top uh, solutions, uh, you can look at the, the paper for, look at the, their paper for more details. Uh, so uh, we have a um, 10 minutes coffee break and uh, move to the, then move to the second track. So see you in 10 minutes.
We will start in five minutes. We will start in two minutes. Uh, welcome back. So, uh, I will intro for the computation track two. We know that high performance image retrieval in the traffic scenarios uh, plays a crucial role in the traffic flow and public uh, security management. Uh, traditional image retrieval method usually use, use uh, the attribute recognition to retrieval images by comparing with uh, expected attributes uh, with the development of multimodal uh, the foundation models, the unification of text and image representation and um, model conversions 
has been widely used. Using this ability uh, can further improve the accuracy and the flexibility uh, of image retrieval. Uh, the goal of the, the, the competition tool uh, is to improve the, the, uh, the accuracy of the text-based image retrieval in the traffic neurons. Therefore, we have annotated the text description for the image of the traffic uh, participants from various public sites and uh, online resources to construct the many-to-many -many image text pairs and uh, participants can conduct research on multimodal techniques based on these pairs to improve the accuracy of the test retrieval for the images. And the same with the uh, competition track uh, one, we provide free GPUs uh, for each participant. In addition, we offer a total uh, a bonus and, and the same with the track one, uh, the track two is also the 5,000 US dollars. And we also release uh, open transmit and the training baselines. And we are also uh, happy that the top teams have utilized the released uh, code base. And uh, uh, this competition con construct constructed a uh, text retrieval image design uh, with multiple traffic participants and uh, based on the open source design. In terms of the annotation, uh, first, a large foundation model is used to enrich the image annotation attributes, and then a large language model is used to construct the corresponding text annotation for the images. Uh, currently, the data size has a total uh, of uh, more than, uh, and here is, uh, it, we, have, we, we have released the data size uh, for the competition. And the data sets contains two categories of traffic participants, uh, both penetries and vehicles. Um, and uh, there are 484 teams joined the competition. Finally, the NGS team won the first place, and the undefeated Little Duan team won the second place, and the Minimodo team won the third place. Uh, congrat congratulations uh, to the top three teams. And the same with the uh, track one, we also certificate the top 10 teams and the, the certificates can be downloaded from the from the from our website. And uh, let's welcome the uh, winner team to share their solutions. Here is the uh, first place solutions uh, for the second track. It is an honor to have the opportunity to share our solution for this competition. We are teams from Nanjing University of Science and Technology and the Dalian University of Technology. Next, I will share our team's solution. I will introduce our team from the following aspects. The goal of this track is to improve the accuracy of text surface to imagine the travel traffic sets. The evaluation metric is the mean average position and the statistic correlation formula is shown below. The data set contains two categories of traffic participants, pedestrians and vehicles. The statistic based distance Distribution is shown in the table in the table, and the sign of simple literal example is shown below. This figure shows the overall architecture of our team. Due to the post domain problem of traffic measures, we divide the problem in two subtasks of pedestrian travel and uh, vehicle travel. For the left of the figure is the pedestrian model attraction, and the right side of the figure shows the vehicle model attraction. Two parts will be described in detail later. We first introduce the pedestrian travel model. We adopt the ion A framework and make adaptive improvements. For modality fusion or must be the future and imagine future, we predict 
the world that the last day is the best. This approach achieves a fine green association between texture and the judges. Again, it is huge plastic tree. Select COS tokens as representations for imagined text. Then I'll fully connect to the layers to shared ways and the 221 classes for multiple classification. It considers intermodal distance and ensures that the feature representation of the imagined text with the same attributes are closely clustered together in the joint embedding space. The objective of AC can be described as follows. Key geometry cross entropy loss. To propose a noble cross model matching method for the inclusion relation matching, the cosine similarity distribution of the images and the text are embedded in the KL divisions to correlate the representations of different modalities. Having text matching probabilities is computed by this. Using text pertains to the inclusion relations so that similar feature representations in the filter space. To increase the matching probability of the imagined text pertains to the inclusion relations. Change the model with three dots. This can not yet from head to match each other with relations. The form three has no head matching which both on the model and the IRA are perfectly each other. However, when sometimes see the man and glasses, the model can be charged by that, the IRA cannot. Now I'm going to do a survey of each other. To model of the model and then the model is built. The end is a recorded GD color text. Experiments show that the argumentation method can get to the wrong places of color with trouble and great improve overall performance. This is tough. So modern texture has a lot of many relationships. Due to the modern texture of label attributes, such as white algae. So imagine as pair of the same type shared by similar virtual representations. Therefore, the category label is introduced into consecutive only to make the same kind of embedding. As close as possible in the symmetric space. The object of the FIPC can be described as this. So 
As you can see, the first place uh, solution they have utilized uh, the, the of the share of the multimodality pre-training models, and they also uh, designed dedicatedly designed a lot of loss functions uh, to do the alignment. And their solutions are posted on the uh, paper page of uh, the foundation model website, and you can uh, go into our to our website to see more details. So and so. Uh, we then move to the second place solutions. Hello, everyone. My name is Hu Zhenhan. Today, I'm honored to present uh, our technical report to cross model image retrieval track of the first foundation model challenge. Uh, our teammates are all from Zhejiang Dahua Technology Corporation. Uh, this report includes four parts, uh, task description, methods, experiments, and conclusion. The first is task description. This challenge is aimed to in implement cross-model image retrieval on traffic signs. That is searching image by text. The data set of challenges consisted of two traffic participants, pedestrians, and vehicles. The data set has a total of 153,000 images, including 136,000 images in the train side and 17,000 images in the validation side. The the data distribution is shown in table one. There are prices mining pedestrian as vehicles. Uh, mean average per, per session is used as the evaluation matrix here. K is set to 10. Here we show some examples of retrieval text in training phase and test phase. It, show, it shows the notable features of the computation. As for vehicle, what attributes can be summarized as three categories, color, parade, and type. Furthermore, Vehicle attributes annotation in training and uh, validation data set is incomplete. While every query text in test data set specifies all three vehicle attributes, when it comes to pedestrians, the 
attribute of rotation is much more various. Apart from that, all attributes are hidden through Hilary values deliberately. The second is our method. We develop our solution on the basis of Clip. Following Clip, we join the train a image encoder and a text, text encoder to predict the correct pairing of a batch of training examples. Strong augmentation strategies are applied on images to enhance the performance. The augmentation pipeline in, includes random resize core, random horizontal flip, random color jitter, random affine, and uh, auto augment. In, in text encoder, we make uh, the vessel adversarial attack on text embedding for better gener generalization. Uh, the method we use the method we use is a fast granted method. We attack text embeddings with an epsilon of one. Uh, and the text embedding can contain token embedding and positional embedding. Considering that there are probably some attribute, same attributes in one bunch of training examples, since vehicle attributes are limited, we make some adaption to the original clip cons constructive loss function. We replace cost entropy loss with care divergence loss for more precise matches in the training. The third part is experiments. At first, I will introduce our tricks and uh, results. In the training phase, we use model, we use several methods like uh, uh, different model scales, weights exportational moving average and uh, suggest find the K for the cost validation. In, in the test phase, we use test time augmentation and uh, model fusion. Uh, as for model scale, there is a MAP gain of about 3.5 from VIT base to VIT large. Uh, as shown in the table, EMA and uh, test time augmentation is used by default for all of uh, experiments. Finally, we train five models to fuse. Our fusion methods contain add seam, add fit, and uh, cut fit. Add seam means adding output similarity matrix of five models. Add fit means averaging the image embeddings generated by five models. And add fit means concatting image embeddings in the last dimension. In our experiments, all three methods can slightly improve the MAP and uh, the strategy of adding same, adding same generates the highest score. As shown in this picture, there are two types of queries in this task. Uh, the one is a query of vehicle, and the other one is a query of pedestrians. The figure show the the figures show the results. Mm, as you can see, the result of the result of vehicles is 
better than that of pedestrian because vehicles has fewer attributes features. The final part is our conclusion and the harvest. Uh, we list some tricks below. The useful tricks in this computation is strong data augmentation, FGM, EMA, TTA, SKF, and model fusion. In future work, we are going to reflect on methods that work theoretically Longly failed to improve the MAP. For example, we made an attempt to calculate vehicle attributes. We also tried to introduce the moving average the encoder from Moco into our solution. And we hold that model fusion between different network architectures like transformer and convex can achieve better performance. We hope our solution can arose insight and contribute to the development of the foundation model society. Thanks for your listening. Uh, as we can see, the second place solution, they have utilized the, the strong augmentation um, based on the off-the-shelf clip model and uh, uh, using the contractive laws to do the alignment. Uh, and they also uh, have uh, doing a lot of ablation studies and you can see more details on their papers. And so like, let's move to the uh, final, uh, I mean, let's move to the third place solution. And uh, this is also the uh, last uh, talk of today's workshop. Hello, respected experts and scanners. I'm honored to present here our detailed solution for the third place we achieved in the VPR 2023 Foundation Model Challenge Track 2. Our work involved extensive efforts and innovations in this report. I will introduce our work from the following aspects. First, I will provide an overview of the structure of our solution. Next, in the sub method section, we will provide a detailed introduction to the two technical approaches used in this competition. Then in the ensemble section, we will explain how we combine the two technical approaches to achieve hair scores. In the details and experiments section, we will present, we will present the implementation details of our pre-training and fine-tuning stages. Finally, we will summarize the methods we employed and the results we obtained in this competition. This is the overall architecture of our solution, including the data inputs, a multi-model unified representation module, heterogeneous model, fusion module, and adaptive re-ranking module. First, let's take a look at the data input module. In this module, we primarily focus on image data augmentation, padding for pedestrian data and prompt augmentation. We enhance the richness of image data by applying image augmentation techniques. It shows the aspect radio to our pedestrian data through padding and enrich text features using prompt augmentation method. Additionally, we use generative models to expand the data, increasing the diversity and the quantity of training samples. Next is the multi-model unified representation module, which consists of multiple heterogeneous models. We have chosen the multi-model constructive learning models, clip and blip, as our best models, and use different training strategies to fine-tune those models. Clip and blip models enable Unified representation between images and the text, helping us better understand the and handle text image relationships. 
will enhance the representation capability and improve retrieval performance by integrating multiple models. By considering the outputs of multiple models comprehensively, we can obtain more comprehensive and uh, accurate retrieval results. Finally, in the adaptive re-ranking module, we utilize the trained flip ITM module to re-rank the top key results. Through the re-ranking of top key results, we can further improve the accuracy of retrieval and the quantity of ranking, thus obtaining the final top key results for text image retrieval. Next, we will provide a detailed introduction to our multimodal unified rep representation module. In order to overcome the limitations of training models independently on single model datasets, we utilize the powerful cross-model alignment capability of visual language pre-trained models and have chosen the multimodal constructive learning models CLIP and BLIP as our best models. The CLIP model employs contrastive learning to train the model. It maximizes the similarity between positive paths and minimizes the similarity between negative paths during training. The CLIP model is capable of modeling the semantic correlations between images and text, achieving cross-model alignment between vision and language. Additionally, we also adopt the BLIP model as one of our best models. The results from the BLIP RTC module are used for the initial screening of top key candidate results, whereas the BLIP ITM module, module is used for the final reloading of the fused results. We selected our models based on open CLIP projects when choosing the CLIP models, we considered the following factors. Firstly, we focus on the zero shot accuracy of the models on ImageNet. We amend to select the models with higher accuracy on common image classification tasks, as this would pro provide a stronger foundation for our solution. Secondly, we took into account the structure differences between the models. We chose multiple clip models with distinct architectures to increase in diversity, thereby improve the accuracy and stability of the fusion results. Lastly, we also considered the size of the models and the scale of print training data. Large models and richer print training data usually Offer, offer better representational power and uh, generate less efficient performance. Based on those considerations, uh, we automatically select uh, three CLIP models as the uh, best models for the CLIP pipeline. Their scores on leaderboard A are as follows. We utilize the BLIP consists of two main modules, Unimodule Encoder. This module encodes the image and the text uh, separately. It processes the image and the text input individually, capturing their respect, respective representations. Another is the image grounded text encoder. This module incorporates visual information by inserting an additional cross attention layer between the self attention layer and the feed forward network for its transformer block of the text encoder. This allows the text encoder to attend to relevant visual features during the encoding process. Next is the ensemble. In our solution, we use three clip models and one blip model for ensemble to improve the effectiveness of model ensemble. We follow the principles below. Different model structures and training strategies we select three clip models with different training strategies. Those model increases the diversity of model ensemble, different data augmentation schemas. To further enhance model diversity, we apply different data augmentation schemas during the training process of each model, enhancing their robustness and generalization ability.
Next, I will provide a detailed description of the training details and the techniques employed in our models. Our training process consists of two stages. The first stage is the pre-training phase with the pre work data. We analyzed the data provided in the computation and found significant distribution differences between the training set and the test set. Specifically, the test set consists of images from a monitoring perspective, where the training set consists of images from a non-monitoring perspective. These data differences can, not to, can lead to overfitting of the model to the training set, generally effective any improvements validated on the test set. Moreover, this posed a significant challenge for model selection. To overcome this data difference, we connected the pre-training data with a distribution similar to the test set. For vehicle data, we used a total of 300,000 images from public and private sources. For pedestrian data, we fine-tuned the stable diffusion model on the training set and generated an additional 218,000 pedestrian images using those data. The second, the second stage involves fine-tuning with the, with the computation data during the fine-tuning process. We employed a series of strategies and techniques, including padding, prompt augmentation, learning rate, loss truncation, top 10 rewriting, and fusion normalization. The computation is divided into two parts, A board and B board. In the A board, participants submit their results, and the scores are calculated by the system. The B board is a reproduction of the results based on the code submitted by the participants, conducted by the organizers without the, without the participants' visibility. We mainly validated different strategies to improve the score based on the model's performance in the A board. Initially, we experimented with the best model and found that Heading and performance lead to a two point improvement in the accuracy. Then, then when we switched to the large version of model, we observed a significant increase in accuracy. After incorporating private data print training, we achieved a five point accuracy improvement with blip and a two point increase with clip. Applying loss truncation and model fusion allowed us to surpass 0, 0 0.8 accuracy. Near the end, we achieved the first place in the A board and the third place in the B board. This report introduced the solutions we adapted in, the, in this traffic sense retrieval task computation. We used a series of methods such as data simulation and the generation to exploit the potential of the foundation model and apply and apply the novel model in simple methods, loss truncation to suppress noise data, promote enhancement and other techniques to improve the accuracy of the downstream downstream retrieval task. We believe that those methods will also have reference value in in other Scenarios. Our work will provide valuable reference for further research and development in this field. Thank you all. Thanks for the last talk. And they have utilized both clip and bleep as a pre-training model. And they also used the stable diffusion model to generate the training data during the pre-training phase. And you can uh, refer you can refer to their papers for the more details. And uh, uh, so here is a uh, last uh, section. And uh, uh, let's uh, welcome Gang Zhang to do the closing remark. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for your participation in the foundation model workshop. During this workshop, top scholars. 
and experts in the field of financial models come together to explore their current status and future prospects. The financial model competition featured much multiple tracks, including a multi-task foundation model track and a cross-model foundation model track. We were thrilled to see more than 1,500 participants from 35 countries and regions around the world. We received numerous innovative solutions and submissions, showcasing the remarkable efforts and dedication of the participants. Finally, the CTIL team and the NJUST team emerged as the champions in their respective tracks. Additionally, we were honored to include people from enterprise and universities like Baidu and Cambridge University. With great pleasure, I now declare the successful commission of the workshop. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to every one of you for your valuable contributions and active participation. participation. Thank you very much. Hello, Ryan. Thanks for your participating. And uh, let's call for end for this workshop. See you. See you. Bye.